Welcome back. Over the past 19 years, she's opened her home to waifs and strays, climbed aboard the wagon, fallen off again, <laughs> been poisoned not once but twice, been arrested for murder, survived <laughs> cancer, and has even been shot by... Uh, she shot a police officer. Wow. It's fair to say life has been far from quiet then for Summer Bay resident Irene Roberts. <laughs> You can kind of push things along a little bit quicker. You have to trust me. You must be real proud. Sounds like he's the son you always wanted. And actress Lynn McGregor joins us now. It's lovely to see you. And thank you very much. It's I'm sorry to see it's, you. it's really marring our view, but it's very grey and rainy today. That's sorry all right. That. Australia's not much better at the moment, love. Trust me. You've had a terrible summer over there. Yeah, we've had a shocking one. I mean, somebody said to me when I arrived uh, yesterday um, um, that uh, they said, oh, sorry about our, our wet rain. And I went, this isn't rain. This is a little inconvenience, you know. <laughs> an inch and a half in an hour is rain. We have had torrential rain all summer. Yeah. Well, in that case, welcome to our lovely weather. Thank you, darling. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> we said in the, uh, in the introduction there, it's 19, nearly 20 years, and, and if it hadn't been for misfortune, you wouldn't have been there in the first place. That's absolutely right. Um, uh, long story short, I went for an audition after I'd done a play. They asked me to come along in an audition for a thing called Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, I was auditioning for Gluttony, funnily enough. <laughs> and um, anyway, I turned up for the audition, crook as Rookwood. I was so sick. I mean, that, uh, Rookwood is a cemetery, by the way. It's an Australian expression. <laughs> say you crook as Rookwood, yeah. So you're pretty sick in a cemetery. Anyway, um, so I was very unwell. I'd been to my brother-in-law's 40th. I had food poisoning. I'd been throwing up for days on end. And I turned up to the audition, walking into walls. Didn't couldn't remember my name, let alone what my lines were. And they went... We'll give you the job. And I went, oh, OK. So a week later, I got a, a call from my agent who said uh, they want you to audition for this um, role in Home and Away, Irene Roberts, potentially ongoing. Yeah, you go, yeah, right. Um, and uh, I turned up expecting a cattle call and there was just uh, me and, and the... the um, uh, the casting agent and three microphone stands, you know, that I was acting to. Mm. Very, you know, moving, uh, like, uh, speech, uh, imploring my children to take me back, yada, yada. Anyway, she said, oh, that's lovely, you know, you'll probably get the job. And I'm like, OK, that's, this is really peculiar. Anyway, I did get it and they sent me the character breakdown. Thin, wasted alcoholic. <laughs> so, because I've been so unwell yeah. And, yeah. and did look like a thin, wasted alcoholic, that's got the you woman girl. for me. <laughs> but your daughter, so it's Clancy, your daughter, isn't yes, she? Yes, that's now right. She's 20. She's 21. 21. So, she would have been one or two when you got that role. So, she's only known you doing she, that's that. That's absolutely right, Phil. Um, she was 20 months old when I got the, 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 the gig first up as a, as a guestie. And, uh, and now she's 21 and she's beautiful and she's at drama school. I tried to beat it out of her. Yeah. yeah. But she just went, no, nope, I'm going to be, I want to be an actor. I love theatre. Oh, yeah. It's my life. <laughs> <laughs> and did you think when you, because you said it originally it was, you weren't even sure you'd get the part, then it, you were only supposed to have a guest appearance. Did you ever think you'd be sitting here 20 years later still mm. talking about Irene? Not in a million years, mm. Ruth. Not in a million mm. years. I just feel so blessed. I mean, in this industry, we all know that it's very touch and go. And it's still, and you know, it's it, just because I'm here today doesn't mean I'll be, you know, on the show next week. Mm. But... Uh, to have done the same gig for nearly 20 years is just beyond my wildest dreams. But you love Irene as well, don't you, as a character? I do love her. She's got... How do you say it? You know, in Australia we'd say she's got balls, but mm. I probably can't say that here, so... No, you can. Um, well, I did. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, no, she has. She has. Yeah, that's yeah. it. She's, you know, she's just got such courage Spirited, and guts. yes. And but she's never truly had love. She's never walked down the aisle. I know, I know. Thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> she has had a lot of bad luck with me. Yeah. But, you know, that's, I think that's kind of, um, that's her lot in life. Well, Ke a car fell on Ken, <laughs> and then Barry went to prison, and then Paris didn't work out, and then Lou, well, you were accused of his yes, murder. Yeah. Mm. So now we've got yeah. Eddie, 
I'm um, not, yes. So is there, is there perhaps, because he's the country and western vocal coach, yes. is there a chance that there might be something there? Well, you know, I think Irene's very vulnerable after her cancer. Mm. He's shown an interest in her. She's discovered, you know, a bucket list in her life. She wants to sing and, and, and enjoy every day. Mm. And she's met Eddie and he's shown interest in her. And uh, she thinks that there might be something, uh, you know, down mm. the track for them. But... She's looking mm. at wedding dresses yet. Well, she was for a while, but then I think she's discovered that he, um, I think just recently we've realised that uh, he uh, was more after her musical contacts. Uh, uh, Ergo, uh, Liam, uh, I know. You spend, uh, you spend very, um, but he was short. a lot of time here when you're not doing Home Away, doing Panto. You come yes, over I do. Every I year. Do. So you're coming back this year? I am Panto? coming back and I'm doing uh, Weymouth at Christmas time. I am so excited. Oh, Weymouth's lovely. I'm, I've heard, yeah. I've heard. I'm working with a new production company, Magic. Magic Beans Productions, please come along and see it. it I'm so excited. I'm playing f uh, Fairy Flesh Creep, lovely name, <laughs> in Jack and the Beanstalk. So I'm the giant's evil you're advocate. Oh, I'm you, the baddie. You've come back over here and you've actually, because of the panto that you've, that you've done uh, here every year, that you've made some lifelong friends, some great I mates. Absolutely yeah. have. My beautiful friends up in York, Maureen and Phil and Nikki and Roger and Garth, mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned them all, and Liz. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just friends all over the country. I, again, I just feel so blessed. I don't think I don't know anyone apart from myself and perhaps Ray Mar and Emily Simons who have had yeah. been able yeah. to do that. Well, uh, what you uh, you're here for now, actually, the reason you're here is because you are presenting an award at the Soap Awards. On, I uh, am. On Sunday, we're recording it on Saturday. That's right. And uh, so I'll see you then. You certainly will. Uh, and then it goes out on Wednesday on on ITV. Yes, I'm very excited. I've been told by Sharon. Yes, your, your, Sharon Marshall, uh, yeah. Yes, mm. that it is a wonderful night. It's a great night. And I should bring my dancing shoes. I'll and, do it as uh, quickly as possible so I get you all in the bar as fast yes. as I can. Yes, well, she did actually mention to bring yes. a hip flask too. So, you know, during the show I can, you know... <laughs> but Sharon. of course, Irene doesn't Sharon drink. that's what been I'm recommending saying. that, is it? OK. <laughs> um, see you on Saturday. See you on Saturday. Lovely to Thank see you. Thank you so much, guys. It's a pleasure. And, uh, and, of course, uh, the, the show that we're talking about is uh, week, uh, weeknights at 6, uh, Home and Away, on, uh, on Channel 5.